Hello, YouTube world. I want to talk to you a little bit today about rigged PGA Tour golf and how it relates to uh, COV and the jab and this NWO system we're seeing rapidly built up all around us. So I want to start by talking about uh, the big news in the golf world over this weekend. Um, if you didn't see, there was a, a big incident that made national news. Uh, John Rahm, who is the number two ranked golfer in the world, uh, had to withdraw, was forced to withdraw from the Memorial Tournament this weekend because of a positive COV test. I don't even want to say the whole word, but you can see the screen. And what was interesting about this is you'll notice he when at the time he had a six shot lead. There's that number six. And I've talked many, many times about how often we see the number six in sporting events and in the rigging of these sporting events. And I don't want to pay, play the video of this. I, I, I don't want to do anything that could get the video removed. But so this is what happened Sunday. The medical officials came and gave him the news that he had a positive test on the 18th green Saturday. And uh, he put his hands, uh, he put his head in his hands and was very upset uh, walking off the course and said, not again. Um, so he had a six shot lead at the time, uh, after three rounds and they forced him to withdraw. So he couldn't play Sunday. You know, he almost certainly would have won the tournament. Um, and th this to me has ritual written all over it. Um, and so let's focus on this number six. I, I so John Rahm. Uh, receives news Saturday afternoon after the 18th green, at, on the 18th green after completing, and by the way, that 18 is a 666 number. He was on the 18th hole. 18 equals 6 plus 6 plus 6. So 18 is often used as a 666 number. That's another one. So John Rahm forced to a draw from the Memorial Tournament with six-shot lead after positive COV test. Uh, very much look like a ritual. Just briefly, I want to talk about uh, the other thing I noticed in the golf world recently um, was Phil Mickelson, of course we know, won the PGA Championship a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, anyone familiar with golf knows that that, that, that win gave him his sixth major championship win. There's that number again, six. Nifty at 50, Phil Mickelson wins his sixth major. Uh, and here we have a look at uh, the final leaderboard, the results from the PJ Championship. And, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, if you've if you watched the channel before, I, I used to be really into golf up until a couple years ago. Um, I was a pretty good player. I was a plus three handicap, um, and I really had, a, a you know, a lot of club head speed. I, I did a lot of training. I could, you know, swing the driver 139 miles an hour when I was really swinging as hard as I could. And I was trying to play the mini tours. Uh, so I was really into golf and, you know, for several years, I didn't want to believe that golf was rigged, but the sad truth is golf is just as rigged as every other professional sport, football, basketball, whatever. Golf is completely rigged, um, it, it, like WWE wrestling. And, and I tell you, it's very naive to believe that Phil Mickelson uh, won this PJ championship without some help as, as much as we might hate to say that. And so your first big hint was let's look where he finished six under minus six. So Phil Mickelson wins his sixth major and he does so at minus six. 
six under par, six six. And as we've talked about on this channel many times before, you know, that number, the number of the beast, the number of the devil, six, we see that so commonly using these rig sporting events. Now, I don't, I don't play any golf anymore. I don't watch much golf. I watch just a little bit of the PGA Championship over the weekend a couple weeks ago. And, and I don't want to play any coverage for it, but I can tell you it looked very fishy and suspect to me. What stood out to me uh, was the scoring looked very off to me. So this tournament was being played at Kiowa Island uh, on the ocean course. And anyone familiar with golf, that's a very famous course. And it was played uh, with a par of 72. So they had four par fives. Anyone familiar with golf that watches any PJ Tour at all knows that whenever they play tournaments at par 72, these guys just tear it up. I mean, they usually finish 20-plus under easily. And the scoring seemed so bizarrely high. Uh, you know, I know Kiwa Island, that's a difficult course. And they had the wind blowing a pretty good a couple days, but... You know, it just looked very off. You know, we see who finished second. We had Louis Oosthuizen and Brooks Kepka finishing at four under. I don't believe for a second that the best that these guys can do for four days on a par 72 course is four under par. Not for a minute. I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but, the, you know, when you see that, it makes you wonder about sandbagging. When you see the best players in the world not able to put up any more than four under par for four days on a par 72 course. And we see Padraig Harrington in fourth place. That's also, you know, quite bizarre and strange to see another really old guy that's not been in contention in many years finishing fourth. So, we see the 50-year-old Phil Mickelson winning the tournament at 6-under par and the runners up at 4-under par. And the little bit I watched in the golf tournament, it just didn't feel or look right to me. They just weren't making hardly any birdies. And I know that's a difficult course. I know they had a couple days. I think maybe it was Thursday. The wind blew hard. The conditions were hard. But... Give me a break on a par 72 where you've got four par fives a day, meaning that's 16 par fives for the tournament. And the best scores you're seeing besides Phil Mickelson is four under par. No way. I don't buy it for a minute. Something is going on. And I don't know whether some of these guys are sandbagging, whether they're using magnets in the ball magnets in the cup on the greens as i speculated or even literally something supernatural and black magic where you've got possibly spirits principalities uh you know aff affecting the ball and everything who knows but point being it looks pretty definitive to me that the definitive to me that this was rigged so phil mickelson wins his sixth major and he finishes at six under par and we see this bizarrely high scoring on a par 72 course. It just didn't add up. To me, it just screamed in red letters that it's rigged. Um, so let's get back to the John Rahm story for a moment. Of course, John Rahm, don't want to play any of this video. Of course, John Rahm had to withdraw from the Memorial Tournament. And when he did so, he had a six-shot lead. Of course, there's that six again. And the, the follow-up from this, no surprise, was we were having a lot of shaming of John Rahm. So apparently, John Rahm has not received both doses of the jab. And I don't want to use the word, but I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to even read this. So this full headline, i got to be careful of what I say. John Rahm's COV disaster is a great, is a great jab PSA, public servant's announcement. So there you see them shaming John Rahm for not having received the COV jab. And if you look through the uh, internet, you're going to see a lot of articles, and it's all the same common theme 
uh, with John Rahm. He's being publicly shamed because he's not had the COV jab. Here we say, see Yahoo Sports opinion. Not a stretch to say John Rahm's jab decision. I've got to use a code word here, but you can read. Cost him $1.6 million. Well, there's that number six again, wouldn't you know? And let's go ahead and read this one because I think in this article, Jack Nicholson says some Nicholas, excuse me, you know, the man who won 18 majors. There's that six, six, six number again, six plus six plus six, 18. Jack Nicholas, the supposed greatest golfer to ever live. So let's go ahead and read it. Golf and business have always gone hand in hand with Hammer Drive sharing workspace with Handshakes deals. So let's speak the language of corporate attorneys and CEO consultants. John Rahm made a bad dis business decision. So you see they're, they're calling him out. If Rahm had, I got to use code word here. And pardon me, let me pause this video playing in the background. If John Rahm had, re had received the jab ASAP at, after his home state of Arizona opened eligibility to all his adults, on March 26, the Spaniard almost certainly would have avoided testing positive for COV at the Memorial Tournament. And had he not tested positive, he would not have withdrawn from the Memorial, which he led by six shots with 18 left to play. Of course, we see the sixth and the 18, the 666 number. And if he had not withdrawn, Rom stood a strong chance of leaving Merrifield Village with a crystal trophy and $1.675 million. It does not take a Fortune 500 company account to connect those dots, get a tiny prick in the arm, avoid the huge hole in the pocket that allowed a cool million and a half to slip through. Once again, you see this, and you got to start wondering more and more every day, is this COV jab the mark of the beast? Because you see the, this point being made now, how they're shaming people of saying, you know, he made a bad decision. If he would have just taken that tiny prick in the arm, he would have made $2 million. By not taking that prick in the arm, he cost himself $2 million. Praise God. I hope that John Rahm has not had this jab. And if you're listening to this voice, I plead with you, John Rahm, never take that devil poison, ever. Never take that jab. And I plead with you, John Rahm, if you haven't, I pray, look to Jesus Christ and ask him to save your soul because if you haven't taken that jab, you still have a chance at it, at salvation and an eternity in heaven and not the lake of fire. So reading on, here we see what Jack Nicklaus, uh, you know, the 18-time major winner says, getting the jab is a business decision in many ways, says, said Jack Nicklaus, CEO of Golden Bear Enterprises who I hear was pretty good at golf. There's no hassle to it after you get it. So you see Jack Nicholas saying, you know, see, you're getting hassles in your life by not having the jab. If you just take this jab, those hassles will go away. There's also little hassle to getting it in the first place. Tour player apologists will point out that traveling pros are too busy to fit an appointment for the jab and their schedules bunk. The tour offers jabs on Fridays to players missing the cut and on Sundays after the rounds. If you want it, you can get it. So here we see the Pay GA Tour promoting the COV jab, just like everyone else. We don't know if Rom, continuing to read here, we don't know if Rom wanted it or if he had received the jab but had not yet received the typical two-week all-clear period. What is certain is that he was not fully jabbed, meaning he'd not received the two doses, or the tour would not have tested him all week after learning on Monday that he had recently come to close contact with someone who had COV. So I'm not positive on this, but it looks like if you're on the PJ tour and you receive the jab, that you get preferential treatment, that you don't have to take the COV jab, excuse me, the COV test every week. As we read again here, what is certain is that, is that he was not fully jabbed or the tour would not have tested him all week. So it would appear that the players on the PGA Tour that have taken this abomination, the COV jab, do not get tested for COV, that you only get tested daily on the PGA Tour 
uh, if you've not had the jab. It, it would appear that uh, that is the case, that it is segregated, that they're giving preferential treatment to those that have received the jab. And reading on, in other words, losing out on a probable hefty payday was avoidable. That's being objective, even if it makes you squirm. The point is not to sound unsympathetic or to shame the anti-vax crowd. And let's be honest, that's what they're doing. They're shaming the people that don't want the jab. But simply to illustrate that actions, or in this case inaction, have consequences. And we're seeing this more and more that people are getting shamed and losing jobs, losing money, losing opportunities, and being persecuted for not receiving the jab. And they're, they're trying to blame it on you, saying your inaction has consequences. Beyond that, what happened to Rom reminds us that COV will always try to get the last laugh. It's not enough for the pandemic to kill and injure. It also creates an us-against-them political culture that turns brother-against-brother, the COV civil war. What absolute insanity. That is, that is the people that run the show doing that, you know, for this virus that is like the seasonal flu this is all a government media NWO creation on this. That, that's why this is such a big deal. So reading on, Twitter was on fire immediately after Rob's forced withdrawal with one side defending him for criticizing tour rules. And by extension, the CDC is overly strict and ultimately pointless. Boy, and isn't that the truth? Uh, and they reason why can't Rob play the final round by himself? And I'm not going to read all these, but... Below, they give some answers to that. And I want to read what what Jack Nicholas said. You can tell Jack Nicholas is batting for the NWO, that, that he's a globalist and that he's doing the devil's work, literally. John is a big boy and understands we have rules. And unfortunately, rules are something you may not like, but they are the rules we have right now, and you have to abide by them. Nicholas said, adding that tour commissioner Jay Monahan feels the same way. Whether he would have shot 64-74 Saturday, the same result would have come out for him. So Jack Nicholas going to bat for the COV jab. I'm not going to read the rest of those listings uh, as to why they wouldn't let him play Sunday. Reading on, Rom also had his Twitter haters who ripped him personally. Their attacks based on the player's jab decision-making. So... He was getting ripped online a lot for uh, his decision not to get the COV jab. If you've not taken the jab yet, John Rod, I applaud John Rom, I applaud you, and I plead with you: don't take it, don't take it ever, and give your life to Jesus Christ. Lost in the reading on lost in the social media cacophony is that compassion and accountability are not mutually exclusive. One can sympathize with Rom even while admonishing him. It is not both and 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 no, either or. Sorry. Case in point, only a hardened heart will take pleasure in watching Rom double over in anguish just off the 18th green upon learning from a tour official immediately after completing his Saturday round that he had tested positive and would need to withdraw. But it's okay to point out that Rom knew that testing positive was a possibility after, as Nicholas put it, he put himself in a position to get exposed. How, I don't know. So isn't it interesting that you have Jack Nicholas publicly shaming Rom and actively pushing the COV jab. You know, Jack Nicholas showing whose side he's on, that he's pushing people to get the jab, and he's showing that he is doing the work of Satan's kingdom. But Nicholas was both careful and correct not to unload on the defending memorial champion. He knew all week, was monitored all week, Nicholas said, referring to Rom having been subject to contact tracing protocol. So, Apparently, they've got contact tracing protocols in place on the PGA Tour now. Rom tested negative every day until Saturday when a, po a test he took after his weather-delayed round on four Friday came back positive at 4.20 p.m. Saturday. That 4.20 is probably more code and ritual. He never went into the clubhouse and stayed away from everybody because he knew he was exposed, Nicholas said. Then he tested positive. Everybody here is devastated. Just a terrible thing to have happen. Actually, Rom didn't stay away from everybody. About nine hours before receiving news, the positive test, he spent a few minutes answering questions, unmasked. So see, we see them shaming him, unmasked, 
shaming him again for not wearing the mask, two feet from uh, from my face. Didn't bother me, but I also did not know he would soon test positive. I'm still not that bothered, but it makes you think. This is just insanity, that this stuff, with how paranoid people are and what a big deal they're making of this, this stuff, wearing masks and contact tracing. It, it, we, we've lost all of our rights. The Constitution is obviously out the window in this country, and, and we're living in, the, in, in this new world, this B system. So reading on, being a business, it also has to make players who have not received, received the jab, i got to use code word here, rethink about getting the jab. So look at this. Once again, they're, they're, they're shaming those PGA players that have not received the jab and telling them they need to rethink and get the jab. Maybe so, yeah, Nicholas agreed. And Levinson, the tour senior vice president of tournament administration, said the percentage of, of tour players who have received both doses of the jab is north of 50%. Expect the number to jump in the coming weeks. After all, it's not personal, it's business. So... We see once again, uh, you know, people are being shamed, in this case, John Robb, for not receiving the jab, and they're being threatened, saying this is a bad business decision, that you should just take the jab because it's a, a good business decision. It's going to cost you money uh, if you don't. And, you know, this is getting very biblical, looks like. You know, the Bible says that he who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And the Bible says that you can't love both God and mammon, God of money. you got to choose one or the other. Um, so, man, it, it's just getting so crazy with this stuff. And here we see once again... John Rahm's jab decision bankrupted him at the memorial. So a whole lot of shaming for John Rahm, saying he lost all this money because he's not gotten the COV jab, and they're just shaming him all over the place on it. Um, very interesting. Uh, we're, we're starting to see this. We're starting to see this more and more, how uh, there's segregation and persecution if you don't receive the jab, they're trying to push everybody to take it. I just heard from someone last week up in Indiana that they had a friend that was not able to rent an apartment because they had not received the jab. They're requiring every single person um, to, re to show proof of receiving the jab in order to rent an apartment. And, of course, we're seeing this more and more that jobs are acquiring it. And it's really starting to make you, you know, like we've talked about before, it's really starting to make you wonder if this is, in fact, and I think it very likely is, truly the mark of the beast. Um, God willing, I'm working on some more videos that I'm going to do soon on the jab and the mark of the beast. But, so, you know, uh just kind of in summary, you know, the, the rig golf, we see Phil Mickelson winning his sixth major. He finished six under par. The scoring was very bizarre, unusually high on a par 72 course. Then this ritualistic event with John Rahm testing COV positive. He has a six shot lead. There's that six n number again. He gets the news on the 18th green. There's your 666 number again. And, of course, uh, subsequently, he's getting shamed across the board for not receiving the COV jab, saying it was a horrible business decision and that if he had just received the COV jab, none of this would have happened. And so, once again, as the Bible says, uh, a friend of this world is an enemy of God, and you can't love God and money. You can't love God and mammon. And, you know, that's the point it comes down to for a lot of people is, I, I got to say, don't sell your soul for money. We got to be willing to give up everything for Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, 
don't take this jab no matter what. You know, this has got to be like it is with me. This has got to be opening your eyes more and more. The more they're pushing this uh, and the more they're taking our rights away and persecuting people that have not received the jab, you know, who knows how much longer we'll be able to, to go on a plane without taking it. And you really wonder if this is going to get to the point where we can't, where you can't go into store, buy or sell with that. And here we see Revelation chapter 13, verses 16, 17, and 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehands, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark in the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. And of course, you know, even in this story, even in this story, we we see the number six coded, six shot lead. They give the news on the eighteenth green. There's your six six six, six plus six plus six. So I don't know. I, I'm you know, God willing, I'm going to cover this a lot more in some videos here real soon on the COV jab, possible being the mark of the beast. But it's looking more and more to me like this this jab may literally be the mark of the beast. You know, particularly if this gets to the point where we can't buy or sell without it. So hopefully we'll have some some new videos on the jab and the mark of the beast coming here real soon. So. God bless everyone out there uh, that's watching, those of you that are in Christ Jesus, and I'll talk to you real soon.